Hey guys, this month we're going to be sharing with you our fangirl favorites of July 2017. Okay, so we have quite a bit to discuss for this month. Let's move through it rather rapidly as best we can. And as always, just a quick disclaimer, anything that we are about to be talking about in this video, there will be absolutely no spoilers, so you can uh, continue as you wish. So let's get going. Looking at my notes here. Yes, I'm making notes for my fangirl favorites, you guys. That might be silly. Anyway, uh, a big topic of discussion. Uh, the casting of Jodie Whittaker as the next Doctor on Doctor Who. Thoughts? No, I don't know who she is. So. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Stephanie. I know who Jodie Whittaker is. I've only seen her on a few other shows. Uh, she was on this little mini-series uh, called Cranford that had uh, Judy Dench and Tom Hiddleston. I really liked her on that. And then, uh, most recently, she's been on these last three seasons of Broadchurch that stars Olivia Colman and David Tennant, and I love her on that. So, uh, let's get this out of the way, you guys. Uh, for the longest time now, because there's been all these rumors, oh, what if the next Doctor is a woman? And I've not really been on board the whole thing of getting a female Doctor. I don't know why. It's just not been really... Uh, pleasing to me for whatever reason. I don't know. But when they cast Jodie Whittaker, I kind of thought about it for a second and I was like, you know what? If it had to be a female doctor, I think I'm content with Jodie Whittaker since I do love her as an actress. So for me, I am willing to give a female doctor a shot. I think it's definitely going to be new and difference and that's either going to be a good thing or a bad thing and we're not going to be able to tell until you know the next season starts so yeah i'm willing to give it a shot what what are your feelings Stephanie? yeah just don't mess it up <laughs> <laughs> well they're getting one new sh show runner? Yeah, shoot, new show runner um so hopefully they can revive doctor who and bring back some some goodness some good old-fashioned doctor who with a new person yeah. <laughs> That's all I want. I just want good old, you know, back to seasons, uh, seasons one, one through five, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> mm, or just one through four. <laughs> one through four. <laughs> yeah, our favorite doctor, right? David Tennant? Right? For you? And Christopher Eccleston. Yeah, we, <laughs> we both really loved Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant. And then I did love Matt Smith, yeah. but his I think his first season was the best. And then that's, I think after that, that's when the show kind of started. And I don't, and I don't blame it on Matt Smith. Though. Yeah, it's not Matt Smith's fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then even though I do love Stephen Moffat, I, just something, I don't know, something about Once he his, took over, it just yeah. went weird. Yeah, because it's like when Stephen Moffat was doing the writing back in the Russell T. Davies era, it was fine. Mm -hmm. You know, because he had some of the best episodes. Yeah. You know, some of our favorite episodes are from him. But then, yeah, it's like once he got absolute control of the show, I don't know. It, it's difficult to explain. It's like you have to be a fan of Doctor Who to understand, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I am, I'm looking forward to a new showrunner, a new Doctor. And even though I did love Bill... I'm, I'm kind of still hoping we get just a, a, a new slate, you know, all around. A completely yeah. new slate, including a new companion. Uh, but yeah, they, they better not fuck this up. <laughs> and I do mean that, because I, I will be very pissed off if this just and I know, does not go well. And now that we have a female doctor, I'd like to go back to a male companion. Yeah. Because I always, I mean, like, I loved uh, Rory and um, Mickey, and Mickey and Captain Jack. Yeah. So now, yeah, or if they do the double, you know, male, female again, but there not be a romance. Like, it doesn't have to be a romance. Yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my concern right now. If they have a, a male companion and it's automatically a relationship. Because the thing with the Doctor, the Doctor has had little romantic interests with some of the female companions, but it's not every single female companion. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm hoping if they do have a male companion, it's not this instant, uh, I love you, mm -hmm. this sort of thing. You know, I, I hope that 
it is a friendship. I mean, maybe if, if they do, if she does stick around for multiple seasons, maybe they can bring in a male companion later down the line. And there is a little bit of a romance. But yeah, I don't want it to be the very first yeah. male companion. That will be kind of irritating. Yeah. Because the thing is, just because she's a woman, I, I don't want her, them to treat her like she's a female doctor. I want her to still be just the doctor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Treat her like she's every other doctor. Don't focus on the fact that she's a woman. Because you, they didn't ever focus on the fact that the doctors were men. Yeah. You know, they were just they were just aliens. That's kind of how he always was. So yeah, treat her as as the doctors always been. <sighs> okay, got that out of our system. <laughs> Either way, I mean, I'm looking forward to Jodie Whittaker. I think I think there is some promise there. I think she looks really cute in um because they had their. Did you watch the video? Mm -hmm. She looks really cute in Peter Capaldi's outfit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to see the switch and she's in Peter Capaldi's outfit. <laughs> I was like, I kind of hope she stays in his outfit for a little bit because that kind of suits her. It looks adorable. I'm very curious what outfit they're going to give her, though. Yeah. they got to be careful with the outfit because they can't make it too masculine. They can't make it too feminine, you know? they got to have a balance there, mm -hmm. maybe. Anyway, we don't talk about yeah. Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah, definitely curious. If you guys are fans of Doctor Who like, like us, what are your thoughts on Jodie Whittaker being cast as the new Doctor? Are you excited? Are you a little paranoid and afraid? <laughs> Just let us know because I think, I think every point of view is valid here. Everybody has their own points of view with this situation and there's, there's really no wrong point of view. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to mention I have a nice new Game of Thrones t-shirt on. Yeah guys, I meant to open the video up with that because I feel random just throwing it in here in the middle of this video. But yeah, I have this nice lovely Game of Thrones shirt and if you can see it's Sansa Stark's sigil that she kind of came up with uh, kind of midway point of last season. And speaking of Game of Thrones, you guys, I am currently doing Game of Thrones episode reviews on my channel because I'm an obsessive fangirl, and I love Game of Thrones, and I can talk about it all freaking day long. So yeah, if you like Game of Thrones, please chill with me. Come and chat with me over on my my uh, episode discussions, because I would love to talk with you guys. So I don't feel like I'm all alone in my love of Game of Thrones. Because Stephanie, Stephanie don't watch them with me. She only watches them with me once they come out on DVD, so she's behind. And I can't talk about spoilers with her. <laughs> I just find them out on the internet. <laughs> Yeah, she gets all the spoilers from the internet. Shame on you. Shame! <laughs> we watched a couple movies this month, or rather, there's one movie we watched together. Uh, the first movie that I watched this month, I watched uh, The Beguiled, that starred uh, Kirsten Dunst, Nicole Kidman, uh, Elle Fanning, mm -hmm. right? Elle Fanning, and Colin Farrell, who I love. Um, I really loved The Beguiled, you guys. Stephanie, I think you would have liked it. <laughs> well, well, when I saw the trailers, <laughs> I was like, the heck is going on S in this movie? Stephanie's not really into historical period dramas. I mean, sometimes, once I do get her into them, I think she likes them. Uh, but well, when I saw the trailer, it looked like some weird, like, disgusting, no, cornish no. movie. No, you know what, the trailers... Rated R, the looking movie. You know what, something about the trailers did come across as, like, it might be a bit pornographic. Yeah. <laughs> but there was no nudity, Stephanie. Or, would, would you watch it now? That there's yeah. No nudity? <laughs> yeah, there's no nudity. Anyway, The Beguiled, it is a historical piece. It takes place during... Uh, the height of the Civil War in the South, following these uh, these women at this, uh, I guess, a boarding school, if you will. And one day, this, um, um, not a Confederate soldier, uh, a Union soldier, that's it. Uh, one day, this Union soldier, played by Colin Farrell, uh, he, he arrives at their boarding school. He's been uh, hurt, and I think he's deserted from the army. So he holds himself up at their boarding school while he, uh, he gets better and whatnot. And in the meantime, all of these ladies, because it's sexy Colin Farrell, you guys, all of these women, they totally have the hots. If we're Colin Farrell, who won it? <laughs> it? It gets a little silly and ridiculous because every single one of them fall in love with him. I mean, even the little girls, I mean, the little girls don't have like a... They don't have a sexual attraction to him, but they do have, like, you know, little girl crushes on older men. <laughs> and it's kind of adorable with them. But, yeah, the three grown women, that being Nicole Kim and Kirsten Dunst, 
and Elle Fanning. Yeah, they all get these but deep sexual she, attractions to him. Isn't she young too, though? Elle, Elle Fanning? Fanning? Well, she in the movie, I think she was still supposed to be... She was like on the older end of the spectrum. Uh oh. Yeah. Like she was just kind of concluding her education, I think. But yeah, you guys, look guiled. I really enjoyed it. It is definitely a very heavy dialogue based movie. There's not really a hell of a lot of of action, I suppose. It is all about the dialogue and the characters and the atmosphere. It's a very atmospheric movie, I think. And and the whole movie is just in this building, in and around the building. You do not go anywhere else in the movie. So that could possibly be boring to some people, but for me, because I love movies like that, it was never boring to me. I think it was really intense and kind of thrilling on occasion. And yeah, just kind of guessing what's going to happen next, because there are some pretty dramatic twists and turns that happen that kind of come out of nowhere. So yeah, have you guys seen The Beguile? Because I really enjoyed it. It was really, really good. That's why I don't see these movies. I'd rather see somebody get their eye taken out with a pen than <laughs> everyone sitting around the dining room table talking. <laughs> Seriously, there were so many scenes at dining room tables. It was great, though. The next movie, and we both saw this together, we got around to watching the new Spider-Man. How did we feel about Spider-Man, Stephanie? It was pretty awesome. It was great. And it, 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 you know, it matched the tone of the rest of the Marvel universe. Yeah. We have seen all of the other Spider-Man movies, you know, we've seen all of the Tobey Maguire movies, we've seen all the Andrew Garfield movies, so it's kind of reached this point, like, oh my god, I can't handle any more <laughs> Spider-Man. So I was a little worried, you know, but yeah, I, I think it was really good. It fit into the current Marvel universe, and it helped having Tony Stark in yeah. there. You know, but I found myself sometimes getting exhausted. <laughs> exhausted? <laughs> because Peter would talk, like, so much at this <laughs> fast rate. And I'm just like, you need to calm the heck down. Tom Holland was so great, you guys. Just the right age to play Peter Parker. You believed him as Peter Parker. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just, I think he was doing a really good job with the, because I think he was doing, like, a New York accent, wasn't he? I'm not quite me. sure. Either, either way, he was doing a I really good job with the American accent because he is British. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, I kind of, you know, see, I forget that he is British. Yeah, I kind of forget he's British too. <laughs> but yeah, good job with the accent, good job with just being athletic and whatnot. And yeah, the humor. I think he was really great at the humor. I'm just, what are they going to do when he starts growing up more? <laughs> you know, like how, how young are we going to keep Spider Man? <laughs> Cause then his voice is gonna have to change. Cause like at the moment they got, he's got like this really. Well, high he's pitched. already like eighteen, ain't he? Is he? Yeah, his voice would already be changed. Oh no, is that <laughs> his voice? <laughs> I, I think that's what makes him a convincing Peter Parker. Cause he's kind of he's kind of done growing up, I think, a little bit. And he's I think he's always gonna have this boyish look. So he's yeah. gonna be one of those actors that always has this boyish look that he can play younger than what he is. I loved the opening, um, the Marvel opening scene with they were mixing the Spider-Man theme with the Marvel music. Mm -hmm. I love that part. Uh, I wish we could talk about spoilers with Spider-Man because there was just so many <laughs> great things. You yeah, guys, God, I love, uh, seriously, I really enjoyed it because I, I, the little bit that we got of Spider-Man in Civil War, Captain America Civil War, uh, I really liked him in that, so yep, can't wait for more Spider-Man. I'm definitely, I'm ready now. I'm ready for some more Marvel. Uh, I'm, I'm ready for Black Panther. Thor, uh, what, Thor's next, right? Yeah, Thor yeah. and then Black Panther. I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, I can't wait, you guys. Our, our little universe is getting pretty crazy. <laughs> so, it's that time of the video because we're weird Funko Pop collectors. We already have too many. Where, where are we going to put these pops? No, no, no. We have no more room officially in this house for Funko Pops, but we keep buying them anyway. So yeah, we have a, a mega ton of Funko Pops over here, you guys. So we're going to try to go through all this as quickly as possible since there is a lot here. So let's get started. Starting off with the latest batch of Game of Thrones Pops. I have 1-1 one, one, the Giant here covered in arrows. And I feel like that's a spoiler. Way to go, Funko. But still, he's really cool. <laughs> we got some Lannisters here. Got Cersei in her new black outfit with her brand new crown. And Tyrion over here with his wine. I love that. I mean, I don't know if y'all can see, but yeah, if you can, if you can look in the glass of wine, it is red. I just love that little detail there. 
got Tormund and Bran next. I really love Tormund. And we've got Bran on his legs. What is that about? Stephanie's back. Yeah, Stephanie, like I said earlier, Stephanie's not caught up on Game of Thrones. She has no idea why he's on legs. So. Why well, he's on legs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to be a little tease there. <laughs> we wanted the deluxe pop with um, with him on Hodor. I know. That would have been great if they could have came out with one. But then that meant he'd have to be pretty <laughs> tiny. <laughs> and then the last. Game of Thrones is Battle of the Bastards with Ramsay and Jon Snow and I think Stephanie's getting a spoiler what? back there. Uh, yeah, I love this. Oh my god, I love it. Ramsay with the bow and then Jon with the uh, Mormont shield covered in the arrows. Oh my god, I love that. His man bun. I love the man bun back there, you guys. <laughs> oh, I love this. Next, I have a batch of a couple anime pops. First, we've got Light and L from Death Note, and from this angle, Jesus, look at poor L. He's like all oh, pale and green looking from up here. He does look green <laughs> there. <laughs> okay, so I've got them. Then I also have Ryuk from Death Note, and I have been wanting Death Note pop since like two years ago. Uh, I just need L eating his piece of cake. And then I also got Shinron from Dragon Ball. And uh, this is a giant pop. It's got all seven Dragon Balls at the base. And uh, this was from Galactic Toys. This was an exclusive from them. And this is really awesome. Next, I have Marie from the Aristocats. And this was a Hot Topic exclusive. And she's flocked and fluffy and adorable. And then we got the cat in the hat holding the fish bowl with the fish in it. Does the fish have a name? I think he does not. I don't or is know. Is he just fish? Maybe he's just fish. But either way, that's super adorable. I like, I just look at that little detail with the fish in there. <laughs> oh. Funko created their own little design for Pops, and they've called them monsters. And this one's called Butterhorn. Oh. And she's precious. And actually, this is the second in the series. Missed the first one. Um, but the rest of them are adorable if you haven't paid attention to them get on Funko's website and look how adorable they are and the next batch that we have here are all the comic con exclusives that have been released outside of comic con thank god <laughs> the one that i was pretty thrilled about is this funko pop ride featuring dean with his impala uh from supernatural i love this because i've been saying for a couple years now where is dean and his car and i love the detail on this because you can open the trunk and i don't know if y'all can, can see it. yeah you can see it uh there is detail in the back of the the trunk here and there it, you can't i can't do it this way but there are like little things of weapons down here in the bottom and then yeah because on the top of their their the the trunk they do have some de design here to ward off demons from getting from getting in and getting their weapons but yeah i love this and yeah, dean comes out he shouldn't be driving with his hands in his yeah, pocket. Yeah, he has his hands in his pocket. He should be... It's not safety. It's not safety, yeah. Next, we got the two-pack of Princess Leia and R2-D2. And this kind of supposed to represent her uh, hologram self. It's the same R2. They pretty much ripped you off with R2. It's pretty much the same R2, except this one, his head bobbles instead of his body. Next, we have Aragorn and Arwen from The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring... And I love this. I love these two. And I like, I love the detail with her hair. And yeah, she even has the little cut on her face. And then, yeah, his, even his, his jacket or his cloak, it's all dirty down here. I didn't even notice that before. But yeah, adorable. Now they need one. Oh, they need an Aircorn and Harwin, like at the end. Of Return oh, like of, they're kind of wedding. Yeah, yeah, the end of, yeah, the end of Return of the King. Oh, I need those. <laughs> Next, we got... Bodhi from Rogue One, the oh, the missing Bodhi from the rest of the set. Now the now the team is complete. He's got his little goggles as well. Next is Clara from Doctor Who. I really like this outfit. Speaking of Spider Man, we have <laughs> Tony Stark. Um, I guess this was from the Spider Man movies, right? That's what they uh, yeah. labeled it as. I, I think. I don't um, know. Just holding his helmet. Got a couple Harry Potter pops here. We got Harry on the broomstick going after the snitch. I absolutely love this one. It's really cool. 
And then we got Luna over here with her goggles. And a little bit of ponytail. Oh. <laughs> and last is the Lorax. And he is flocked as well. Well, that that's not technically it. There's still five more on their way here. Good Lord. From, from the internet. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I guess we'll be showing those in to be continued in the next fangirl favorites anyway guys this has been a long video uh in the comments below what have you guys fangirled or fanboyed about this month did you watch any movies tv shows uh music uh video games anything anything that floats your boat just share with us down below so that's it for this video we hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to like comment and subscribe and if you like this video you may like these other videos bye guys